A lot of people don't realize that LA is a very park poor area. A full 50% of our county residents live in communities where they don't have easy access to a nearby park. We go around everywhere on bike, on bus, but we cannot go too far, right? That we can go like whatever the metro can leave us. I'm, I'm so happy that um, that I discovered going to the outdoors by my, for myself and for my benefits because I know that I've become a better person for it. It's just amazing to be able to provide and make these beautiful connections for community members so that they can really see the beauty that's around us. Nature is a major teacher and it's representation of the purity of life. I think for a lot of LA people, and I was the same way, you know, I didn't know about the San Gabriel Mountains growing up. So people's LA looks like this, you know, they live in the city, they see the mountains, it's the backdrop to the city, but nobody knows what's back there. Um, what we're really doing is opening access and opening people's eyes to all the natural beauty that we're surrounded by. When the mountains are 70% of our county's open space and you don't have a single way for the public transit system to connect into the public lands, that's a huge, first, transit problem and that's a huge environmental justice problem. Because, you know, if people didn't think about how to provide access into the national forest, that's a really big issue. Nature for All and our many partners are really excited because we're developing LA's first bus system to the mountains. This is really an, a critical thing for access to nature for our gigantic urban population because you know folks have a lot of stress in their lives. Um, it's really important to have a place to escape to from the city, to seek out those mental and physical health uh, benefits and outdoor recreation. I believe I was 29 years old when I really wanted to make a change in my life. LA is known for, you know, the, their clubs, their bars, so that's pretty much what I did in my 20s. And going into my 30s, I knew that I needed a change and I needed something different. And the outdoors, hiking was something that um, was new to me and uh, actually one of my friends began the 52 hike challenge which is a social media challenge that you log you, we will log 52 hikes in a year there's a cross right from the from the first day of of the year we we did our first hike actually here in wisdom tree and from there that year i committed myself to doing a hike a week and that sparked my love of, of the outdoors, of hiking, of exploring. Not a lot of people know about how to get outdoors without, without a vehicle. So, you know, biking, using public transit, even just carpooling with friends were, were my means of transportation. So it was really difficult at, at first, but once I discovered all these new groups, all these new organizations, I also got to just discover other, other parks around the area that would give me that access. I'm the program coordinator with Community Nature Connection. And so today we're gonna to be going on a transit to trails. It's gonna be from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. So what this trip will provide is transportation, understanding that some communities, right, 
this can be a barrier to be able to access these spaces. In addition, to, we're able to guide and do a facilitated nature stroll or nature talk to be able to connect the community members into spaces in the outdoors. We always look this kind of opportunities to go to outside to the parks because it's really hard for us to move out to one west side or another side because we don't have a car and this is incredible here because <laughs> the public transport is not working so good it's because the same it's it's like a circle now the people have a car so don't need the public transport um, this kind of opportunities for us is super cool. And we go around everywhere on bike and bus. Uh, I, I bike every day to my work. Um, we go to the grocery store on bike. Yeah, mainly on bike. We take buses, but we cannot go too far, right? That we can go like uh, whatever the metro can leave us. With Community Nature Connection, right, we're an organization that strives to increase access to the outdoors, to communities that have been most impacted by racial, socioeconomic, and disability injustice, and we do that by eliminating barriers through advocacy and this community center programming in addition to workforce development. We're going to be hiking over to Inspirational Point, and like I mentioned in the registration page, it's about a 1.4 mile hike and there's like a 246 point like, like elevation it's great to have the opportunity to have, to, to have a bus and sadly there are not too many buses not even i mean we even can pay for them but there is no options we're never gonna we haven't visited many places around because we just um, can't find transport this sh shuttle to the mountains is really great because it'll link up to the existing metro rail system. So what we have proposed is the Mount Wilson Express route, which will come from here, Pasadena Memorial Park Station, and jump up the Angeles Crest Highway and take people to nine different stops uh, all the way up to Mount Wilson. Um, over at the very uh, popular San Gabriel Canyon side, of the forest, uh, that stop will come out of Azusa Station. And with our partners, we're also working on a Chantry Flat route in the middle. Um, that's one of the most popular hiking areas in LA. So with those three, uh, we have the beginning of what will really become LA's first shuttle system to the mountain. This map also indicates our the disadvantaged and severely disadvantaged uh, economically communities defined by the state. And what, why that's important is a lot of our low-income communities are clustered around the metro rail system, which is really good because they'll be able to just hop onto their metro line, come up to Pasadena or Azusa, and hop on these shuttle buses on the weekend and exit out into the forest. Nature for All has been working on this project for multiple years with a whole lot of partners. We have amazing support from our congressional representatives, from Congresswoman Judy Chu, uh, who was just able to secure almost a million dollars to really break ground on these shuttle stops, which we're so excited about. Congressman Jimmy Gomez as well, who's uh, written the Transit to Trails Act in Congress to provide new funding for projects like this. Uh, we have support from the city, uh, LA City Mayor Garcetti, and, and a whole slew of nonprofit organizations. 
there's so many groups out there that um, you know community nature connection folks that in each different way are connecting folks to nature or working to strengthen their communities and so we're really glad that we work in a very collaborative environment to, to work on these issues. Before I do start, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, distribute the binoculars. You've been excited for binoculars, so. <laughs> then, yeah, and then I'll give you some binoculars. just literally a natural way of being to live amongst nature. It's only within a couple of hundred years that we've been so removed in high rise buildings, in offices, uh, spending hours of a day in factories, spending hours of a day in cars. Something that's only happened for less than 200 years when you have thousands of years of human existence. So to the right right here, we have a, a bird that's gliding. It's black, flying away. <laughs> you did? Being able to be outside, you're connecting to the earth, you're getting fresh air, you're able to breathe and bring your body into a state where even though you're not sleeping, it's resting because it's not worrying about, I'm doing this and I'm doing that and there's all this noise and there's all this chaos that allows you to feel safe, to feel comforted, um, to feel present. Uh, it brings your stress level down. Yeah, with the binoculars, I saw some birds, some some butterflies. I saw that uh, quite a bit of hawks, hawks, and I saw some woodpeckers. I see. It's a, it's right there. Oh, see what you're talking thing. about? Yeah. Ooh. I want to look at that one. Yeah. I want it. Again, there's more California sagebrush, smells super good. Then we have uh, the black sage. You also smell it, right? Touch it nicely. You can smell. It has this beautiful smell. Super fragrant, yeah. The sensory engagement, it's really calming and peaceful, and it really supports promoting healthy well-being. So being able to touch the textures, being able to smell and hear. It really helps decrease stress. And so yeah, this is Inspiration Point. This is a beautiful place to come hike to. It's all the way to the top. Uh, it was amazing to have folks use binoculars for the first time. Uh, Nestor, the youth, was super excited. He had lots of energy and it seemed like he also had a, a lot of knowledge through like reading books about some of the birds. And so it was really amazing to be able to foster that experience. Whether it's going to a beach, going to a forest, going to a basin, going to a desert, going to the mountains, right? It's important to know that any topography that you're in can be restorative. <laughs> and then we can share just what was one highlight from today. For me, the inspirational. That's the top. Yeah, the top. <laughs> it's super cool. The view. You can see all the like the, the Bali. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah, nice. Yeah. For me, for me, also the top. It was just so amazing. Mm -hmm. All the hard work of of climbing the mountain freedom. Mm -hmm.
The shuttle project is one piece of a whole suite of comprehensive things that need to happen in the forest to make visitor services better. There's also a really important uh, visitor education side of this that we're beginning to call Recreate with Respect. Um, because we want to really make sure that for the folks that are coming on the shuttle for the first time, we want to give them a really good experience and leave them as knowledgeable, respectful visitors to the forest so that people you know, honor and respect the land and don't leave trash and really are, are being very sensitive visitors. Providing the first chance to experience wild nature in our own backyard is that really fundamental step on a whole path to becoming an environmental protector. So if you take that away from folks, um, you have to also understand what the consequences are. You know, access has to come with responsibility, but I believe we are really trying to build in all that education and responsibility so that our future stewards are really coming out of this program. I hope that more youth come out because I believe that this is good therapy, being out here, being away from uh, uh, your, your phone, being away from social media, actually talking to people, actually you know, listening to your thoughts while you're out here, looking at the animals, the birds. When, when, when it comes to health, it's, it's not just physical health, it's, it's physical, mental, and spiritual. So that, that's what I believe and you know, I believe that's what I got. I'm, I'm so happy that, um, that I discovered going to the outdoors by my, for myself and for my benefits because I know that I've become a better person for it and I, I wish that on others. I want more people to, to come out here and, and you know, let, it, let it consume them because I think it's just one of the best connections that we could have.